Good morning, world. Hey, Cedric, do black lives matter? Absolutely. Of course they do. But honestly, it all depends on which black life you're talking about. I'm Cedric. And I'm Brian. And this is Cedric and Brian. What do you mean by that? Wow, put me on the spot right away. What I mean by that is, uh, well, it's, you know, and then not to poke fun at this, trying to be more serious here. Do Black Lives Matter? Of course they do. And do I dare make the statement? All lives matter. I know. <laughs> but in the case of this movement, Black Lives Matter, I think it really depends on which black life you're talking about. Um, take the case of the gentleman in Milwaukee, Bernal Tramiel. Okay. Um, yes. Terrible. Six, terrible, terrible tragedy. Most of you probably haven't heard about it. Yeah, he was a black gentleman, 60 years old, who people in the community knew he was a Trump supporter because he actually had signs that said that he supported Trump. Yes. Owned a business. Well, I guess you call him a, a storefront preacher or a yeah. storefront preacher who was down on the, on the corner and he would talk about politics and religion. I guess a reporter came to town one day to interview him, and that's when it really became known that he was... Uh, he was more on the right. Right. And uh, became a Trump supporter, and then uh, he was uh, brutally murdered. Uh, they're still investigating that. It's just ironic, though, that he was murdered shortly after that interview. It was actually an execution because it was targeted because of his beliefs. Right. Which is, in essence, worse. I tried to find articles on him because this happened back in July. Mm -hmm. And I looked at local papers. It was not a huge story. I mean, why was this not a huge story? This person was killed in cold blood. But you know why it wasn't a huge story. Well, I, I, I can speculate. <laughs> I can speculate. For and, one, uh, he wasn't killed by a white police officer. He wasn't killed by a white police officer. He was killed, uh, and I know people hate this phrase also, but it is, it is called there black-on-black -black crime. And again, the whole Black Lives Matter movement focuses on .001% of what's going on out there when the big problem is black on black crime. But I was talking to someone about this earlier. It's like saying, it's like you're driving your car and the radio dial is fuzzy. You can't tune in a certain station and you're like, oh my goodness, I gotta, I gotta fix this. I gotta fix this. Like, but your transmission's going out. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that, I'm not gonna worry about that. That's what this whole Black Lives Matter movement is to me. It's like we're focusing on the radio dial, not being able to tune into the right station when the transmission and the engine are having serious problems. That's where the, the meat of the problem is. And if you watched our episode yesterday, we actually put a whole list of people that are black and on the right that you don't, you won't see in the mainstream media because I look for it. I look for it. Unlike the other way around, I know people that won't even go into a room if Fox News is on because they just can't stand it. Right. Well, I don't mind looking at CNN or MSNBC because then I get to see what's out there in the news and how it's being portrayed portrayed. I don't remember seeing him when this happened, Bernal Tramel, remember his name. I don't remember seeing that hitting the news. Right. It's just like you didn't see too much about uh, David Dornan. And not to be cynical again, like I said before, not to, but he was, maybe he was the wrong black life. Yeah. No, didn't fit the narrative. And those are people that were targeted basically because of what was going on with the Black Lives Matter. But then you just have the crimes that have been going on for decades, like this seven-year-old little girl and this eight-year-old little girl who were just and they, those were back in uh, I know it was a month ago on 4th of July but again unless you turn into something that's a little more conservative or at least neutral down the middle you don't hear about these stories because they do not fit the narrative but the numbers are horrible out there for black people that are being killed. Right. But since, like Cedric said, they aren't being killed by white people or by police officers, they don't make the news right now because right now it's all about, not black lives, it's about the Black Lives Matter movement, which we've discussed on our other episodes, that really is not about black lives, it's about Marxism, leftism, all of these things that fit a narrative. If you go to one of our earlier episodes, just a couple two, three episodes ago, we talked about the, the gentleman in the NBA, Jonathan Isaac, and I think he articulated that so well. And he said, me wearing a Black Lives Matter t-shirt or kneeling has nothing to do with black lives. Right. Everything that they're doing is for this movement, Black Lives Matter, the movement. But if I put on a t-shirt that says Black Lives Matter, 
do I feel any more strong about that if I wear the shirt I'm wearing now? Right. No, Black Lives Matter because for those of you who don't know, I'm black. So to me, I know, don't tell anyone. So to me, <laughs> and Cedric and Brian has been canceled. <laughs> so it's because to me, black life, and more importantly, Cedric's life matters. Well, going <laughs> since you brought up wearing clothes, so this man, Burnell Trammell, Burnell Trammell, was murdered, executed most likely, and again, we're speculating, because he was a Trump supporter and a black Trump supporter. Cedric, would you be afraid to wear your red MAGA hat? Am I afraid to, to wear it? No, I'm not. We're in a probably more conservative area. But what if yes. you were in, What if, would you wear that through Watts? I'm trying to think. Compton. The hat, well, the hat's red, and that's <laughs> a whole different thing, because red being bloods and blue being crips and things like that, that's a whole different... But you know what I mean. I, I, know I mean, you, mean. you would feel comfortable wearing that? Or would you feel a little nervous? I feel a little nervous. Yeah. And isn't that sad? Yeah. I put that in the comment center. Do you want to see me walk through a predominantly black neighborhood with a Trump shirt? I don't want to see that because I, I, I mean, we're not joking around. Bernal Trammell was murdered. Right. I don't want to see you. And it's sad that I have to say that, that I, I, would, I would fear for you. And, and maybe, that's being, I'm, maybe I'm being racist. Right. Maybe that's a racist thing to say. And we still don't know why my tires were slashed. Two oh, that's weeks right. Ago. He did have his tires slashed. <laughs> I don't like this whole polarization anyway. People want to blame this on Trump. It was going on. We pulled up clips, what was our Tuesday episode, about how President Obama had turned a eulogy into a campaign speech for right. Joe Biden and basically right. a, a bashing Trump at a eulogy. When was the Antifa movement? And when was, uh, it was it's Antifa and Black Lives Matter? Yeah, that started all under Obama. That, that was born under whose administration? Yeah. yeah. But then I'd say that was all his fault. Yeah. He didn't do a lot to... To, to, to quelch it and, and knock it down. Yeah, he made it worse on some of the cases, like the Michael Brown. He could have brought everybody together because we look back now and we know that that narrative was false. Right. The whole hands up, don't shoot right. was a false narrative, but Obama didn't help quell it. He actually fed the flames of, yeah. of that whole situation. Well, I told a good friend of mine that story. We were on a walk like two weeks ago, and I told the Black Lives Matter movement was based upon a lie. The whole Ferguson story was based upon untruths and lies. She was said, you have no idea what you're talking about. I said, I'm not going to get into a yelling match with you. Right. I said, look into it, check it out, get back to me, we'll talk about it. Well, just yesterday, she goes, oh my gosh, you were right. Yeah. I said, because people want to jump to the emotional narrative right off the bat. Okay, bad cops, bad white cops, or just cops in general. Because in some of those cases, the cops were black, but they were still cops, so it was still bad. Right. So Black cops' lives don't matter. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I remember that funny clip of the white woman at the Black Lives Matter rally yelling right. at the two black, black cops, cops. Yeah. and a guy walks over and says, don't you think this is silly that you're sitting there yelling at two black officers about their black lives? And she she's so oblivious. It's like, no, because cops are bad. <laughs> you know our positions. We We don't like the movement. Black Lives Matter. I haven't liked it for years for other reasons, just because I saw it separate children from their parents six years ago. So it, it, right. it touches a nerve with me anyway. But now we see the hypocrisy of it. And that leads us into this, and this is what worries me, because just this week, body cam footage of the George Floyd arrest came out. And it shows that it's not as cut and dry, so it's going to muddy the waters at trial, which worries me, because that prosecutor raised the stakes by charging uh, Derek Chauvin with second-degree murder right. instead of keeping it at manslaughter, which you can prove, because now with these body cam, and if you haven't seen the footage, Google the footage, it shows that George Floyd, we already know that he was on two different uppers, two different right. bad drugs. Right. Um, but now it shows that he said he couldn't breathe while he was in the car, in the not car. even on the ground. Before he was on the ground. Yeah, that he had asked to be put on the ground because he was claustrophobic, even though he was sitting in a car earlier, he was too claustrophobic to get into a police car. Which but, he had more room in the back seat of the car I than know. he did in the front seat of his own car. And you could see that he was kind of out of his mind already. Officer Tatum said this earlier in a, in a clip. He said... Unfortunately, the police have to play to the cameras because there's cameras. Right. So the police officers should have said, okay, they should have got off of him, 
when he started to wrist assist, then go back down, calm down, calm down, take your knee off of your wrist again and go back and forth for the cameras so that you could say, okay, we, he just wasn't behaving. Right. And but, I have a strong feeling, I don't know if this is true, and I have a strong feeling this is going to be done quickly before November, before the election, because as sad as it is to say this, right, we're getting to the point now where the small business owners are taking the, the graffiti off the walls mm -hmm. and replacing the, 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 the glass in the window and taking the boards off the thing. If this verdict comes back and these cops get off, which it oh, looks very well like it may be, well, it's, it, it's going to be riots part two oh, it's gonna, all over again. Well, because remember Rodney King, there weren't riots when the footage came out of him getting beat. The real riots happened when the cops got off. Right. That's right. when the city burned. And my fear is, for one, after you see this footage, it's going to be very hard to convict the other three officers. Yeah. Derek Chauvin should go away, but because they made the burden of proof so hard yes. by upping those charges, I'm worried. And I told my wife, I said, during this trial, I, I want to go find a a place in the middle of Wyoming where nobody is <laughs> and rent a beer, beer Airbnb or something. We can film from there. Yeah, just because for those of you too young to be around in the 92 riots, or 92 or 93 92. riots, it was scary living around anywhere near the vicinity of Los Angeles because people died in Los Angeles and Long Beach. I mean, right. just innocent people walking by because they got caught in the emotions of what happened with those officers getting off. I have a feeling this is going to be the atomic bomb of it is. that. Right. And I have a feeling, I mean, they're going to get off because... The, they're playing to the rules of the court. It's not going to be a racial thing. Right. Like if they had gone for, gone for manslaughter instead of yeah, extent. Ex yeah, excessive force. Exactly. Anything that's, that shows, okay, he was wrongfully killed, but you have the toxicology reports by one of the, mm -hmm. uh, the DAs. Um, now you have this body cam footage showing that he said he couldn't breathe before he was ever put on the ground. This just worries me. So t one of two things can happen. One, he gets off and then and, and the country burns. Two, he becomes a sacrificial lamb. And they just say, I don't care about the evidence. We're going to convict this guy. Otherwise, it's going to go back. Right. OJ. Oh, that's what I'm going to say. OJ, I mean, if you think it's... Yeah. I mean, we can't complain too much because OJ is still walking the streets. Yeah, well, he was until he got re-arrested re for something yeah. else. Karma's a bitch. You want to end on something light? If you can find something light, we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> I just read, or I saw it on a, a video clip, of a... A lady in L.A., a black lady in L.A., who stated that she is going, because of the violence and racism in the United States, she's going to move to Mexico. <laughs> I think I remember. <laughs> that, is, that doesn't fit jumping out of the frying pan to the fire. Nothing does. Because it, it doesn't uh, Mexico have the, the second highest killing rate behind Syria or something like that? I don't know if it's Mexico. I know Honduras has one of the highest murder rates. But oh, my goodness. This lady did not do her research no, she didn't. <laughs> before she is going to escape the... Vi but you know what I heard? That she's, she's thinking of moving to Puerto Vallarta. That's... Oh, it's my like goodness. like moving to Orlando, right? Jeez. <laughs> like, wow. That's like going to a... I went to Jamaica years ago, but you, when you say those, those, those inclusive, all inclusive things yeah. where you're blocked out of what's really going on, yeah. and as soon as you venture out two or three miles, it's like, let me get back to the hotel, please. Yeah. So she does. Uh, I mean, you want to go see what it's like in another country, and you want to, and you think Mexico's good? Go move to Sinaloa. Go move someplace that's not a resort community where you're going to just be surrounded by a bunch of Americans anyway. You're, you're leaving America to get away from Americans, and you're going to go to one of the hot top uh, vacation spots. <laughs> I think I heard a little about that story. She, like, she quit her job, sold her house. Ah, it's just, I mean, thing. And th yeah, here, you're living in a place where you have 330 million Americans, the, <laughs> the, the, the melting pot of the world, and you're going to Mexico as a black woman where you're going to be ostracized and good luck to her. Like I said, she did not do her homework. <laughs> it's a damn shame. I guess that was pretty lighthearted on a silly way, but yeah, yeah I mean, hard. Come on. Nice. Oh, my so goodness. Look that story up because it's funny. Oh. It's funny. Well, tell them about our shirts on, on Teespring. Yeah, if you don't, didn't hear our shameless plugs right here, mm -hmm. you can get your Cedric and Brian shirt. And on the back has Cedric saying, uh, It's a Cedric. damn shame. So you can get those at Teespring. Uh, I've got, we've got plenty of styles. We have um, T-shirts, tank tops, women's tanks, women's tees. Uh, I'm going to be working on more and more uh, types of clothing. 
Well, we hope you guys uh, like the information that we brought to you today. Uh, we're just trying to keep you guys current and talk about from our perspective, our perspective only. Again, uh, leave it in the comments if you agree with us or if you disagree with us. If you do disagree with us or you do a thumbs down, please tell us why, else we don't learn anything. Just the, the random thumbs down tells us nothing. Uh, you're doing thumbs down because you don't like the way I look? I mean, that I'll get a lot of those. No, that, but, that would never happen. No, stop it. Remember they say they like your teeth. <laughs> thumbs down. But uh, as you watch this, make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell, and share this video with everyone you know on Facebook and Instagram and whatever else you use social media-wise. Share it with everyone. Anything else to say, bud, or are we wrapping it up here? I think we're good. All right. Until next time, you guys be safe out there. I'm Cedric. And I'm Brian.